Did you know that the term vandalism has its etymological roots in a Germanic kingdom responsible for the downfall of the Roman Empire? The Greeks and Romans considered most of their contemporaries barbarians. During the latter half of classical antiquity, Germanic tribes in Europe were putting up significant resistance against the civilized Romans. For centuries, the Romans would try to eradicate the Germanic tribes, only to succumb to them in the Middle Ages. These days, when one imagines a vandal, it is often an unruly youth with a covered face drawing graffiti on a wall of a public building. And the act of deliberate defacement, destruction, or damage to public or private property is known as vandalism. Few can connect a street hoodlum to an ancient culture. The origins of the vandals could be traced to what is today Sweden. From there, they migrated with the Goths, another Germanic tribe, to mainland Europe, more precisely to a region now known as Silesia in modern Poland, around the Oder River. Modern historians date the end of this early migration to the end of the 2nd and the late 1st century BCE. Once settled there, they might have become part of the Szyborsk culture in central and southern Poland. This culture was named after the village where their first artifacts were found. Roman historians and geographers wrote the first historical records of the Vandals in the first century. Various sources claim that different settlements developed around the Oder and Vistula rivers. Most of the tribes had achieved a similar technological and civilizational level of development with resembling lifestyles and cultures. During the second century, the more prominent Vandal tribes split into two parts. The first group became known as the Silingi Vandals. They remained on the banks of the Oder River in what is today Silesia. Some historians have even linked the name of this region with the Silingi. The other group, known as the Hasdingi Vandals, moved south toward the borders of the Roman Empire on the Danube. This move was part of an extensive Germanic migration to the south, which created severe pressure on the northern Roman borders, referred to as limes by the ancient Romans. Because of that, Roman sources speak more often about them giving us more information about the Vandals' history. Around 170 CE, the Hasdingi, under the rule of kings Raus and Rapt, became the allies of Rome, and they were allowed to settle in the province of Dacia, roughly modern-day Romania. The Romans used them to fight the Marcomanni tribe and their allies, the Quads and the Iazyges, all located on the Danube border. From archaeological evidence, it seems they decided to settle in the valley of the Tisa River in present-day eastern Hungary and northern Serbia. The Romans continued to use the Hasdingi Vandals in their political and diplomatic schemes to relieve the pressure from their borders, prompting them to fight other tribes around them. The Vandals neither posed any serious threat to the Romans, nor did they offer a valuable alliance, so the Roman authors sparsely mentioned them during the 3rd and 4th centuries. Around 330, some of the Hasdingi settled in the Roman province of Pannonia, just west of the Danube River, probably fleeing from those Roman foes, the Goths. Over the following decades, the Hasdingi became a part of the Roman world, receiving their culture and offering trade. As for the Silingi Vandals, who remained in Silesia, further away from the Romans, we have no written accounts. When the Huns began to appear in the steppes of the northern shores of the Black Sea, the Vandals became highly valuable because of their riding abilities. Stilico, born to a Vandal cavalry officer and a Roman woman, held the highest Roman military rank of Magister Militum. He is remembered as one of the last great Roman generals. He was in charge of defending the western parts of the empire and fought wars in Britain, Africa, the Balkans, and Italy from 382 to 408 CE. At one point, he was even a regent for the underage Western Roman Emperor Honorius. However, not all Vandals saw themselves as part of the Roman Empire, as some joined forces with the Goths to rebel against the Romans. In the early 5th century, the pressure from the east intensified, and several Germanic tribes sandwiched between the Romans and the Huns began to unravel. The Vandals were no different. They feared for their survival, mainly from the Huns but also due to the disarray in the Roman Empire. In the early 5th century, they attacked the Roman province of Raetia. For a few years, the Hasdingi Vandals remained in one place, allowing them to forge a loose alliance with the Germanic Suebi, which consisted of the Marcomanni and Quadi tribes and the nomadic Alans, who moved from the Pontic steppe due to the pressure from the Huns. Together, they moved toward the Rhine River, the eastern border of the Roman province of Gaul, located in modern-day France. On their way, 
the Selenghi Vandals joined them, making the Vandal coalition a more prominent danger to Gaul. In the last days of December 406, the Vandals decided to cross the Rhine and pushed into the unprotected Roman lands. The Franks were Roman allies, or Fodorati, so they ambushed and laid waste to the Vandal army, killing their king, Gudigisel. In the following years, the Vandals moved into southern France. In the autumn of 409, they crossed the Pyrenees Mountains into the Roman provinces of Hispania. Once there, the Vandals realized that the Iberian Peninsula was primarily unprotected, which prompted them to start pillaging and looting the Roman citizens again. After sacking Rome in 410, the Visigoths went to Gaul and allied with the Norius, intimidating the Vandals. By 412, they had divided most of the Iberian Peninsula among themselves. The Hasdingi Vandals and the Suebi settled northwest of the peninsula in the province of Galatia, the poorest region of Hispania. The Selingi Vandals got Hispania Baetica in the south, now modern-day Andalusia. At the same time, the Alans established themselves in Lusitania, which would now be Portugal and western parts of Spain, and in Hispania Carthaginesis in southeastern Spain on the Mediterranean coast. In 415, the Visigoths crossed the Pyrenees, and by 417 they were again fierce allies of the Romans. They massacred the Alans and the Selingi Vandals, who were seen as the biggest threats to Roman imperial rule. The defeat led the remaining Vandals further south to Baetica. In 422, the imperial forces lost against the Vandals, who conquered Carthago Spartaria, modern-day Cartagena, in southeastern Spain, gained control of the maritime routes in the western Mediterranean and access to some naval power. With a strong base in southern and southeastern Spain, a decent fleet, and an uncommonly talented leader, the Vandals were in a perfect position to finalize their migration from cold northern Europe to warm northern Africa. In 429, the entire Vandal force and their Alanic and Visigothic followers crossed the Straits of Gibraltar into Mauritania Tingitana, a Roman province. The Vandals abandoned their holdings in Spain, and from Mauritania, their army moved eastward toward their newly crowned King Gaiseric's ultimate goal, the city of Carthage. The Vandal invasion was the first actual barbarian invasion of the Roman provinces in Africa, a foundation of the Western Roman Empire in a region that had been untouched for centuries. The Roman Empire never recuperated from the loss. Landing in modern-day Morocco, the Vandals pillaged the coast of northern Africa. The Roman general, Bonifacius, tried negotiating to no avail. After a loss, Bonifacius barricaded himself in Hippo Regius, a heavily fortified city near the modern border of Algeria and Tunisia, and the most important religious center of Roman Africa. The Vandals lay siege to the city for 14 months, while Bonifacius retreated to Carthage. The Eastern Roman Empire came to reinforce the Western Empire in 432. Their combined forces suffered a substantial defeat. Rome had no choice but to negotiate, or more accurately, to accept and affirm the Vandals' possession of Hippo and the lands around it. In return, the Vandals became Roman Fodorati. A peace treaty was signed in 435 after a period of prolonged ceasefire. In 439, the ambitious Vandal leader, Gaiseric, broke the pact and conquered Carthage quickly. The Romans lost their African jewels, and the Vandals gained most of the African merchant fleet and shipyards. After a failed invasion of Palermo, a city on the northern coast of Sicily, a peace treaty was signed in 442. According to this agreement, Rome recognized the Vandals' control of Proconsularis Africa, a Roman province of Africa, eastern Numidia, Byzacena, and a coastal strip of western Tripolitania. These lands would have been located in modern-day East Algeria, most of Tunisia, and a small part of the northwestern coast of Libya. After the death of Attila the Hun in 453, the Roman Empire was further weakened due to internal struggles. Gaiseric, who was banking on his son, Huneric, to rise through the Roman ranks, realized that political events were spoiling his plans. So, in 455, he sacked Rome, giving the term Vandal its modern connotation. The Vandals looted the city in quite an organized fashion, and the legend of Vandalism was propagated centuries after to embellish a once great empire. Gaiseric continued raiding the central Mediterranean, mostly southern Italy and the Adriatic littoral, closest to his kingdom. The Vandal Kingdom also occupied Sicily, Sardinia, Corsica, the Balearic Islands, and some strategically significant parts of North Africa that the Romans previously held. 
In 460, a powerful Roman fleet sent to attack the Vandals was laid to waste. The Western and Eastern Roman empires resorted to diplomatic terms with Gaiseric, but began pushing him out of the imperial policy in Italy after a few years. The Vandals retaliated by seeking ties with the Visigoths in Spain and a disgruntled former Roman general. The Romans were tired of the Vandal threat, so they organized a massive attack. The Romans faced a defeat despite initial success, and the Vandals began pillaging the Mediterranean again. After the fall of the Western Roman Empire in 476, the Byzantine Empire made a deal with the Vandals, who stopped their looting. Gaiseric, one of the most capable rulers of the 5th century, passed away in 477. His death prompted the downfall of the Vandals. The reigns of Huneric, Gunthamund, Thrasimund, and Hilderic were full of religious controversies, as the reconciliation of the Vandals with Nicene Christians proved difficult. In the Mediterranean, the Ostrogoths gained power, nudging the Vandals toward diplomatic union by marriage. In the early 6th century, the Moors, one of the semi-nomadic Berber tribes in the south, began to raid the Vandal borders. Most notable were the fights in the Tripolitania region, in modern-day Libya, where the Moors managed to achieve a significant victory over the Vandal cavalry. Later, in 523, they even sacked Leptis Magna, an important port city in that region. After a coup on religious grounds, Gelimer, a member of the Hasdingi royal family, became the man in town. Amid straining diplomatic relations, the Byzantine Emperor Justinian sent around 18,000 troops to Carthage in 533. In 534, Gelimer surrendered, bringing an end to the Vandals. The remaining Vandal soldiers from Constantinople and Africa were sent to the eastern frontier to fight the Persians as able cavalrymen. Some remained in North Africa while others returned to Spain, where a small Vandal community remained. But they slowly assimilated into other societies and nations, and soon after their final defeat, the Vandals lost their ethnic identity. They and their kingdom disappeared from the historical stage, leaving only a faint memory of their former glory. How would you like to get a deeper understanding of history, impress your friends, and predict the future more accurately based on past events? If this sounds like something you might be into, then check out the brand new Captivating History Book Club by clicking the first link in the description. To learn more about the Vandals, check out our book, The Vandals, a captivating guide to the barbarians that conquered the Roman Empire during the transitional period from late antiquity to the early Middle Ages. It's available as an ebook, paperback, and audiobook. If you enjoyed the video, please hit the like button and subscribe for more videos like this.